Hello and thank you for having me. I'm Jeff Culbertson, one of your five county commissioners. Uh, I represent the north end of the county. Uh, I think I was picked for this assignment because it's about explaining to you the history of how we got here on taxes. Uh, I've worked at the county since 1986, so I can tell you how it all works and where the problems are. So I'm sure you've heard the saying, if you don't learn from history, you're doomed to repeat mistakes. So let's start back in 1950, uh, when the county's only updated values on property taxes uh, on the appraiser's uh, tax roll when the property sold, which happens to be one of the new proposals to fix the current situation on property valuations. There have been several options presented to supposedly fix the rate of increase values. One is to freeze values. Only uh, one, another one is only increase values a set 3% or whatever the cost of living uh, increase is that particular year. Um, another one, and actually that's what Senate Bill 1604 that's presented in Topeka right now is about, which I'm not against if it's just a temporary fix until the real problem can be addressed. Another one uh, option uh, offered is to just go by a square foot model, meaning uh, whatever square foot is on the house, that's what your value is. Uh, it doesn't matter what year the house is or how nice the house is. I think that's a terrible idea. So let's look at 1950 uh, to 1980. So a house that sold in 1950 for $30,000 is now worth $300,000 on the current market. But it's still valued on the county tax roll for $30,000 because it has never sold in those 30 years. And now in 1980, another house that just sold for $300,000 is put on the tax roll for $300,000 value. So even though both houses we're talking about are both worth $300,000 in the current market, one person is paying 10 times more taxes than the other guy. That's not fair. So reappraisal was born. The state stepped in and told all 105 counties they have to reappraise every parcel in their county and bring each property up to its current market value so that all values were fair and equitable. To make sure we didn't get in the same situation again down the road where property values were not fair and equitable, a new set of laws were entered into our state constitution. Every year, each parcel's value is kept in line with its current market value. This would guarantee you always pay your fair share of taxes based on values compared to everyone else. The valuation system the state made each county use was pretty much the exact same system fee appraisers use when they, you hire one to appraise your home, or the bank gets an appraisal done on property for loan purposes. This Marshall Swift based process is used, uses actual sale prices of five houses just like yours to come up with a value on your property. They pick five houses as identical as they can find to yours that have sold in the last six months and average those sale prices together to see what your house should sell for on the current open market. You don't have to do any improvements on your home to see a value increase because your value is determined by what the five comparable houses sold for. Now we can spend hours on talking about this process and define identical houses. A common argument is there is no other house like mine. In some cases, that's true. So they have to find similar houses. There's an entire segment in the appraisal process about that as well. There's a rating scale that scores attributes about your house compared to others. The CDU rating, condition, age, square foot, materials used, quality, all are taken into account. Location is another big element to find values on similar homes. Sometimes I hear people upset because the county used a comparable home clean across the county to value your home. There are aspects of that to understand as well. The county appraiser builds neighborhood maps. It basically defines characteristics of the neighborhood like average lot sizes, average age of homes, average square foot, topography, drainage, amenities, utilities, and the list goes on so that they can find similar neighborhoods to yours. So if you get compared to a house clean across the county, it's still required to be in a similar type of neighborhood based on criteria. All this is still subjective to plenty of criticism depending on where you're looking at it from. But at the end of the day, the proof of whether it works or not is also built into the system. Argue all you want about how the county came up with your value. 
But when houses sell, the state requires the sale price has to be within 10% of that county's value on that house. If your house sells for $100,000, the county had to have had between $90,000 and $110,000 on it for the county to be in compliance with PVD regulations. They run a report at the end of each year, like a quality control, to compare every sale price to what the county appraiser had on each of those houses. Our report for this year showed that Leavenworth County is typically assessing houses for about 85% of what they sell for. Our county appraiser has tried to keep in compliance with PVD regulations as far to the low side as possible. To a point he now has to fix being too low. Now there's always exceptions to everything. One of the things I wanted to go over with you today is the simplest problem to fix and that's mistakes. When you get your valuation notice, it's always a good idea to just make sure the county has accurate information about your property. If you have never talked to the appraiser's office, I think it's a good idea to do that at least once. You want to make sure they didn't have you down for four bedrooms instead of three, uh, too many bathrooms, too much square foot, wrong year build, condition of the interior, things like that. They don't go inside your house, so if they don't have a questionnaire you filled out, they guess at what's inside. Also, another big easy fix is ag use. Agricultural land is valued much less than market value. So if you use any part of your land for ag purposes, like hay ground, crops, cows, etc., you want to make sure the county appraiser has it listed that way. A 10-acre residential lot would typically carry about $100,000 residential value. But if that same 10 acres was ag use, it would carry about $1,000 value. In tax dollars, that would be $1,500 a year tax bill versus $150 a year tax bill. That's a huge difference. The biggest question to ask yourself is, would I sell my house for the amount the county has it appraised for? I know a lot of people are going to say, but I don't want to sell my house, and I understand that. But to figure out if the system is working for you or not, you have to figure this out. Would my house sell for what the county has on it? No one wants to see the county raise their appraised value because they know that value is tied to taxes. But is it a fair market value? If you don't know what your house is really worth, ask a realtor to look at it as if you were going to sell it. And they will tell you what it would sell for. Or ask an appraiser to look at it. This will help you determine if there is a mistake on the county's part or not. If there are no mistakes and the county has fair market value on your property, but your taxes are getting higher every year to an unsustainable level for you, then what's the answer? First, you have to understand how it all works before you can find a solution. The short answer is always cut spending. Uh, who sent you the tax bill? It must be their fault. Let's kill the messenger. Well, that's why the real problem persists and isn't even getting addressed today. But let's look at that knee-jerk reaction of the county needs to cut spending, which is what Senate Bill 13 at Topeka right now, or was actually passed last year, was supposed to have fixed. Well, it didn't. Why? Because that's not the problem. I'm not saying you don't have to be very frugal with the county budget. That was the first thing the county did. Over the last 30 years, Leavenworth County has been acting like we were under Senate Bill 13 all along. That's why Senate Bill 13 did nothing to help the tax problem in Leavenworth County. Everything in the bill we have already done. It says the county needs to stay revenue neutral. That means only spend the same amount of money on the county budget as you did last year. Well, just like your personal household budget, if you try and only spend the same amount this year as you did last year, the cost of living will force you to cut something out of the budget. You can't have the same things you had last year. Something has to go. So you just cut out the fat and only pay for what you absolutely need. And you can do that for a couple years. But after a while, there is nothing left to cut, unless you want to really start noticing important things missing. There is no way you can remain revenue neutral 10 years from now with the cost of living going up an average of 4% each year. That means it costs you 40% more in 2033 than it did for the same things you had in 2023. If you did remain revenue neutral for that 10 year period, you would have to have cut your budget 40% of your assets and services. This is unattainable. 
I understand people saying we need to cut the fat out of the county budget. The county started drastically cutting the county budget about 30 years ago. They stopped giving raises to employees. After years of no raises, they took it up a notch by cutting salaries. When someone would leave, the new hire was paid less. The problem with this is the county got way behind and below comparable salaries across the board. People are leaving left and right to go to better paying jobs. They did a RIF, a reduction in force, and laid employees off. Problem with this is the remaining employees' workloads went up, so the service to the public went down. They revoked several holidays. This works well cutting costs because your 24-7 employees get paid double time and regular employees get paid for not working. They stopped paying sick leave when you retire, if you had built up sick leave. They stopped buying new cars and made all the departments use old sheriff's cars after they had about 300,000 miles on them. They combined departments and they combined jobs. We used to have brush crews to keep the ditches mowed and the trees clear. They cut health inspectors. They cut out county doing, the county doing perk tests. A perk test determines if your land can have a lagoon or a septic system. What's the big deal, you say? Well, a lagoon is one-tenth the cost of a septic system. If you want to save money, you want your land to fail a perk test, so you get to put in a cheaper lagoon. If you don't want the sight or smell of a lagoon, you want your perk test to pass, so you can have an underground septic system. We've noticed a lot more failed lagoons and laterals since the county stopped doing perk tests. My point is that everything we cut comes with consequences. When do the consequences outweigh the savings? That's where we are today. Every department has cut and cut until the public outcry for that service or lack of service is loud enough they stop cutting and back up one step. We have reached a minimum acceptable level of services in every department. Every single county department is now severely underfunded. Some more than others. Road and bridge, for example. There are 150 bridges in the county. A bridge lasts about 50 years. So to be responsible, we should be replacing about three bridges every year. But to try and lower the budget, the county has cut the bridge fund to an irresponsible point and we only replace one bridge a year. The easiest can to kick down the street is a budget line item that doesn't show up right now. No one will notice this fund is short until years down the road. Well, guess what? We are years down the road right now. No one will notice this fund is short. Uh, until years down the road. Well, guess what? We're years down the road now. The county used to blade your driveway uh, or clear snow for one hour per taxpayer per year. We used to put in driveway tubes. We used to stripe the roads. We used to spray dust control chemical on gravel roads. We tried cutting back on mowing ditches this last summer and calls were non-stop complaining about that. There's also a safety factor problem with not mowing ditches. You can't see oncoming traffic coming out of driveways more serious consequences saving money. Most recently some things we did to save money is stop paying almost hundred thousand dollars a year in rent for several county departments including the Council on Aging. After spending almost a million dollars in rent we now have a permanent home for them at Cushing. We also are going to rent out the third and fourth floors to pay all the utility bills and on the entire building including the county departments and any maintenance or repairs to the building. So you went from being a tenant to a landlord. We did the reverse with the juvenile detention center to save money. It was costing us about $350,000 a year to maintain this facility, and sometimes we would only have one prisoner in it. So the sheriff contracted with Wyandotte County now to hold our juveniles, and savings is tremendous. The list goes on and on. What I'm trying to make sure everyone understands is that we didn't just start cutting the budget lately. Way before Senate Bill 13 was passed, we had already set our target to remain revenue neutral every year for the last 30 years. In reality, Leavenworth County has cut the budget so much over the years, we have the seventh lowest mill levy in the state of Kansas out of 105 counties. There are only six counties that you could pay less taxes to the county than us. I know certain people keep telling you Leavenworth County has the highest mill levy or the fourth highest mill levy or whatever they're saying. But that's simply not true. Look it up. It's easy to, information to find. I think when they say that, they're confusing the combined mill levy 
which includes your school levy, library levy, township levy, all those levies all into one. I think that's what they're saying is the highest mill levy. But all those other mill levies the county commission has no control over. The levy we do control has, over the last four or five years, been cut until now we have the seventh lowest in the state. All this cutting has been done to try and lower your taxes, but your taxes are still too high. That's because that's not the real problem. Even if we drastically cut the county budget, which makes up about 28% of the average person's total tax bill, let's say 20% for argument's sake. Forget about remaining revenue neutral. We're going to above and beyond and cut the county budget 20%. If your tax bill is $4,000 a year, your tax bill would only go down about $200. So you have decimated your assets and services because the county budget is your assets and services. You have decimated your own assets and services to yourselves and your tax bill is still $3,800 instead of $4,000. You can't expect that even a large cut on one of the smallest divisions of your tax bill will make much difference. The real problem is Kansas puts too much weight on property tax. There are three main sources of taxation, property, income, and sales tax. Kansas puts 90% of the weight for your county budget on property tax and about 10% on sales tax and zero on income tax. The least fair way is property tax. It only taxes a few people, so a few people have to pay a lot. Income tax and sales tax include a lot of people. So a lot of people would pay a little. Property tax system doesn't care how much money you make. It cares how nice your house is. With income tax and sales tax, if you make a lot, you can afford to pay taxes. If you make a little, you only pay a little. The state actually came up with a Band-Aid fix using this exact theory. It's called the LAVTR, Local Ad Valerum Tax Relief. Ad Valerum is just a Latin word for property tax system. So, it's, it, in the name in itself is local property tax relief. It shifts some of the weight off of property tax onto sales tax. There's a state law that says the state is supposed to pay each county and city's LAVTR funds every year to help lower property tax. The state legislators saw the problem of too much weight on property tax. They came up with the LAVTR as a temporary relief to offset property taxes with sales tax. The problem is the state ran out of money, so they just decided they would keep the county's LABTR money. This would be about $3 million a year for Leavenworth County alone. We could lower your mill levy almost four full mills if we were to get the LABTR from the state. But they vote every other year to not follow the law and keep your money. Senate Bill 196 at, the, uh, at Topeka right now would reinstate the LABTR. Another state fix to offset high taxes that somehow just stopped happening is the Kansas lottery. Remember back when the state had TV commercials trying to get the voters to pass the lottery? They advertised that the lottery money would go to schools, which would have drastically lowered your property taxes because about 60% of your tax bill goes to the schools. Today, zero lottery money goes to the schools. What happened to that? Whatever it was happened at the state level not the county government level. Um, Senate Bill 196 is LABTR. Back to Senate Bill 13, it's called the Truth and Taxation Bill. Supposedly, to make sure the taxing entities, like the county, be more transparent to the taxpayers to show how the tax money is collected and spent. Again, this bill did not change anything for Leavenworth County. We already remain revenue neutral every year and only increase the budget by the cost of living each year. We already have open meetings on the budget. We already vote on budget increases in public session. We already did everything Senate Bill 13 supposedly addressed. I wish they would take it a step further. If you really want a truth and taxation bill to cover everything, then make it apply to the state budget as well. The state exempts themselves from Senate Bill 13. They not only don't have to remain revenue neutral, their budget increased over 24% last year. Another transparency should be the state unfunded mandates. About 30% of the county's budget cannot even be cut because it is put in place by state unfunded mandates. The state says you will have 
this department or service by state law, but the state will not pay for it. The money has to come out of the county's budget. Missouri passed the Hancock Amendment years ago to stop state unfunded mandates because they knew it was not fair to the counties. So when someone says the county's share of your taxes are about 28%, they don't tell you that about 9% of that 28% is really the state's money. Another lack of transparency is the assessed value. Different weighted percentages placed on property. Residential land is assessed at 11.5%, ag land is 25%, uh, commercial is 30%, and etc. This was all a smoke and mirror system the state came up with to manipulate valuations right in front of your eyes so no one can understand it. There is no reason to use assessed values instead of straight up appraised values other than to make it non-transparent. Half Senate Bill 13 include more transparent measures at the state level if you want full transparency. Don't exclude the state. So what do I suggest? After looking at this whole system for almost 40 years, the appraisal system is not broken. It does a pretty good job at keeping everyone at current market value each year. Saying the appraisal system is the problem will not fix your high taxes. Saying the county budget needs to cut will not fix your high taxes. The LABTR would temporarily help a lot, but by itself will not fix high taxes. Using a property tax-based system is especially bad for Leavenworth County because our county is 35% tax exempt. Fort Leavenworth, the prisons, churches, and school property, all worth about $2.8 billion in valuation, pays zero property tax. That means the other 65% of us are paying our share and theirs. If we would shift some of the weight off property tax and onto income tax and sales tax, it would fix our high property tax problem. Right now, only about 30,000 parcel owners are paying all the bills. If you go to an income and sales tax, hundreds of thousands of people will be paying the bills. When you spread the bills out among a few people, they have to pay a lot. If you spread it out among a lot more people, they only have to pay a little. I think the numbers will surprise you. We could completely eliminate all property taxes, your house, your land, your car, boat, RV, all your property tax, by only increasing sales tax and income tax 4%. But that would be putting all our eggs in one basket again. I think the better answer is to cut all the property taxes in half with a 2% increase in income tax and sales tax. That way you diversify and put equal weight on all three legs of taxation. Ask yourself, would you trade paying 2% more in income tax and sales tax if you paid half the property taxes you pay now? That's what Senate Bill 79 in Topeka right now is about. Another way to drastically lower taxes is broadening your tax base. More people to help pay the bills. Increased number of homes helps lower taxes. It's hard to see this because the cost of living expense is still outpacing our new construction in our county. Your taxes keep going up <clears throat> even after adding more houses. What you don't see is your taxes would have gone up even more without new construction. There's also a misconception that more houses cost existing residents more money because they stretch our infrastructure too thin. Even though this is true to a certain extent, it's not true here. If you're the only house in your tax district, you pay 100% of all the bills. If another house gets built in your tax district, now you're just paying 50% of the bills. With 10 houses in your tax district, now you're paying 10% of the bills. It's pretty simple math. Now you look at the infrastructure issue. If you're talking about rural residential housing, we're not talking about the $150,000 home anymore that's using up our infrastructure. The average new home value today is $480,000. That's a lot more tax money. Gas utility is not stretched too thin. Most everyone in the rural county is on propane. There's no shortage of propane companies that wouldn't love delivering a house to your, a, a tank to your new house. The three electric, electric companies in our county have all said there is no problem adding new customers. That's why they don't even charge you for new hookups. All the water districts tell us they welcome more customers. The sheriff and EMS say they are not even close to having issues serving more households. So helping support new residential construction is something we can do at the local level to lower taxes. 
Another way economic development can lower taxes is adding commercial and industrial business. Commercial pays a lot more taxes than residential, but to do that, you have to have a location where those entities want to be. Access is the key. Businesses need lots of residential rooftops close by to fill their jobs, and they need to be close to major transportation hubs. We don't have railroads, river traffic, airports, or even major highways for the most part. If we could fix this problem, industry would come. If we were to build a new bridge connecting Eisenhower Road to 152 Highway at 435 in Missouri, we would become much more financially independent. Adding residential housing, we are doing now. Building the new bridge will take a while to get done. But the most important way to fix high property taxes is for the state legislators to shift the weight off of property tax and onto income tax and sales tax. Please ask your legislators for a blue ribbon audit on the taxation system at the state level. Another aspect of this is to make sure the income and sales tax is used 100% to relieve property taxes. It needs to be built into the bill and the Constitution so that it doesn't just end up being another added tax on top of property taxes. So in conclusion, the county continues to cut as much as we can and come up with new ideas to save tax money. But they are all small measures that can't make much difference on your tax bill. It is your county budget. It's your county budget. The county is 100% service oriented. All we do is turn every penny of your tax money into assets and services for you. Anything we cut is your assets and services. Stop asking to cut your own services. Start asking to fix the real problem. The real fix has to be done by you at the state level. Help our state legislators understand the real problem. If we don't all understand this, we will continue to pay high property taxes. And that's all I have.